Hey, what's up guys? It's Beja at Baker Hill Farm. Today, I am going to show you how I'm fitting an unnecessary like canning project into a somewhat busy day, um, even if it's not necessary. So today I'm gonna be canning, hopefully I get done with it, canning uh, chicken pot pie filling, just the chicken and the veggies and the bone broth. And um, I am making everything from scratch, so um, I don't have a chicken that I'm like chopping up. I'm cooking a whole chicken because that's how our chickens are. We just process them whole and they're in the freezer like this. This is already thawed out. Um, and then I am going to pull all the chicken off of that after I cook it, make the broth, then put the veggies in and the chicken back in and actually do the canning process. So um, if you have chicken that you just like, like breast or thighs that you just chop up, then you're gonna completely skip the step I'm fixing to do. You would just chop your chicken and you can add it in when you go to boil your veggies before you put them in the jar. But for me, I've got to cook this whole chicken first. And the fastest way to do that would not be to roast it. It would be to just put it in the Instant Pot. So I'm fixing to place this in my Instant Pot with a cup of water. I have it on the little stand thing that comes with the Instant Pot. And I'm going to season, I'm going to put a little bit of oil on there, season it with salt, pepper, paprika, and onion powder. And then I'm going to cook it for 15 minutes because it's thawed out. If it was frozen, I might do like 20 minutes. Um, if it doesn't get cooked all the way, if it was frozen, it's not a big deal because you're going to reprocess it when you pressure can um, the veggie mix. So I'm going to cut this open and go ahead and get it, get it in the Instant Pot and get it going. And once the chicken is done, I'll come back and show you my next steps. Okay, so my chicken is done. You can kind of see it in there. It's finished. Um, and now all I'm gonna do is I've got a glass Tupperware here. I'm just gonna use these tongs, which won't be hard because it's cooked pretty through. And I'm just gonna use it to pull the chicken off and put it in this Tupperware, leaving the bones and all the liquid in my Instant Pot. I'm just taking the chicken off because I'm going to chop it and use it, um, put it back in there. But I don't want, I don't want it in there when I'm making the bone broth, so. Okay, so I have my chicken here. It was just one chicken. Um, I haven't chopped it up yet. I'm gonna let it cool a little bit. It's just easier to work with when it's cool. This is about how much broth a chicken made on its own. So I'm gonna add about half a gallon. I don't know that I'll use all of this. Um, for this project, but I know I'll use it for something. So now what I'm going to do is put my lid back on to my Instant Pot and plug it in. And I really want a good broth, okay? Because I want there to be a lot of nutrition in the broth. I don't want it to just be like in the veggies and the chicken. So I'm gonna cook this on the soup function for about three hours. I would normally do four if I was had like two carcasses in here and was making just a big batch of bone broth. But since, um, since I cooked the whole chicken in here first and it already has so much broth just from me cooking the chicken, I know it's gonna be nutritious and good and only have one carcass and I don't have as much water, so I'm gonna do less time. So in the meantime, I'm going to, sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna take this chicken, put it on a cutting board and just chop it up really good. Um, and then put it in the refri, the refrige, put it in the refrige until I need it later. Squeezing this little segment in here really quick to explain the watermarks you've seen throughout this video. Please continue watching so you can hear what this is about. There is a page on Facebook called Green Farm and Baker Hill, and they are stealing all of my content and posting it as their own. Um, of course, they have never shown me in a story or done a live video because they're not me. If you are seeing this on a page called Green Farm and Baker Hill, it is stolen content please report it as fraud um, and impersonating a business at Baker Hill Farm. Um, please report them even if you're on YouTube. Go over to um, Facebook and please report their page. They're stealing all of my content. So um, the only place that you will see content from me that I've posted is on Facebook, 
Instagram or YouTube and the page is Baker Hill Farm always it's not been changed and I don't plan on it being all right so my broth is done got it here in the instant pot it just finished actually and I have to leave the house so this is a great way about like doing this in steps I can leave the house I'm gonna be gone for a few hours then when I get back um, this will have naturally released and I will just add my veggies and my chicken to a pot with my broth and I will show you that when I return. I'm back. Ugh. Okay, so this is what I'm doing next. Here's a pot. I've got my chicken and I've got a bag of organic vegetables from Azure Standard and I'm just gonna throw all of this in a pot with some strained bone broth over the top um, and bring it up to a boil to see what this looks like. I don't want like way too many veggies per chicken. I want it to be kind of like, you know, an even amount, something we'd want to consume. But the reason that I'm throwing all of this into a pot and then putting the broth over it instead of like just sticking it in jars and canning it like that is because I need to bring that chicken and those vegetables all up to the same temperature as the broth. They all need to be warm because I'm putting them in a warm canner and I don't want any glass to break. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, take that off so it's not annoying. And I put a strainer right over the top of my pot like this. And I'm gonna pick this up, how hot is it? Oh, it's pretty good and hot. I'm gonna pick my broth up, put it over the strainer until I have enough broth, like, and it looks like I have enough liquid to can, which looks like it's gonna be all of this. So that was kind of perfect. Okay. And I'll show you about how much we have here. So I made sure that I have some liquid in there. I didn't want it just like really thick. So I'm gonna be scooping with a ladle. I could even put a little bit more broth in here if I wanted to. Um, and then I'm gonna season this. Okay, so if you'll remember, I only seasoned the chicken. I didn't season the broth or the veggies. So I just threw some seasoning in here. I did like two teaspoons of salt, a teaspoon of pepper. Um, I did a couple teaspoons of parsley and then I did some onion powder, but you really need a season to taste. This is just kind of like what you have um, and you need to see how you like it and then taste it. Now I went ahead and turned this burner on to start heating up my pressure canner because this isn't going to take too long since the broth is already hot. Um, but I really like having something like this on hand. I'm not someone who just cans plain meat. Um, I find it very unappetizing. Personally, I think it has like a weird smell. So I don't mind having like a soup though. I don't mind having a soup base. For some reason, it's just more appetizing to me. And if it's unappetizing, then I don't wanna make it. So I'm not gonna can food that's unappetizing because I'm not gonna use it like I should. So this is just more appetizing to me. Now I'm gonna actually do this in pints. You could definitely do quarts if you know you have a really large family and you're gonna use all of it in one, one go round. The reason I'm deciding to do pints is because it just makes it more accessible if we wanna do like a small serving. Um, if just like two kids want, want to make it up and, and make a recipe with it, it's easier. And then if you are in an emergency situation, it helps you only make the food that you're going to eat instead of having leftovers that like, let's say it's an emergency situation and you don't have refrigeration, you gotta figure out what to do with that or keep it warm um, so that you don't have any like a bacteria growth or just, you know, keep it covered. Food actually lasts longer than people think just on your stove. But anyways, that's not this conversation. So, um, I'm gonna go get my pint jars out and um, double check my canning time. It's gonna be however long I can chicken, um, which I'm thinking is 40 minutes, but I could be way off, so I gotta check. I'm glad I checked because I was way off. It's one hour and 15 minutes for pints, and if you're doing quarts, it's an hour and 30 minutes. So I'm in my kitchen, or not kitchen, this is my pantry here, I'm grabbing my jars. Not sure how many I'll need. 
I'm probably going to need quite a lot, hopefully. <laughs> we hope. Uh, I did, let's see, I put half a gallon of liquid in there. So that would be two quarts. So that would be four pints. And then we also have the chicken and stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and grab like nine pints and just hope I need that many. Okay, so our uh, soup is about the same temperature as the canning liquid, so I'm going to start filling my jars. Um, sadness overload, I have to use these wide mouth pints because the only four jars lids I have left are the wide mouth, and I'm using four jars, especially if I want it to last a really long time. Uh, so, that's what it's going to have to be. Um, it's pressure canning, so you need one inch headspace. So many times people be like, for this recipe, you need whatever inch headspace. If it's pressure canning, it's one inch, period. All right, and then I've got my four jars funnel over here. Make sure you get some broth in there as well. Not just all of the bits. Go to one inch. That looks good, and then we're gonna move on. I don't know how we did that, but I got out the perfect amount of jars, which was nine. Now I'm wiping the rims with just vinegar on a very, on a clean, like freshly clean cloth. You can use a paper towel if you want. And then I'm going to add my lids, but look how appetizing they look, okay? Doesn't that look just so much better than like ground beef in a can? Okay, so I got my lids and my uh, rings on. I'm gonna slowly put them down in the water just in case the water got a little hotter than the jar. Don't go fast, you don't wanna shock the jar. So slowly put them in there. And then um, I'm going to add my lid on top and turn it and lock the lid so that it's shut tight. They just look so good. Now, after they process, they won't be that green. That's just part of it. Adding my lid. Once this right here pops up, that tells me that we are at a good pressure and I can add my weighted jiggler. Let me show you what she looks like. She's a 10 pounder. This is uh, for 10 pounds of pressure. Um, and I will add that to the top. And then once we get a good rock, where we're at 10 pounds of pressure, I will start my timer. Okay, so my timer just went off. So I'm just turning this off. I'm gonna let it naturally come down from, from, from pressure. This is gonna go all the way down to zero. And then that little toggle is gonna go down and then I'll be ready to pull everything out. So I'll show you what it looks like when I pull it out, but the whole purpose of this video was to show you that even if you have a busy day, you can fit in canning um, and prepping into your schedule without it being like super overwhelming. Utilizing the tools that are modern, like an Instant Pot or a Crock Pot, um, I was able to leave for like three or four hours and then come back and finish up the rest of the process. So um, I have put away food for my family for the future without really inconveniencing myself too much throughout the day. Okay, so here they are, they're done. Uh, you can see that the color does darken a bit on those green beans, which is a little sad because it's so pretty when it's that bright green. But it looks like all of them have sealed. Once they cool down and I can touch them, I'll remove the rings and then I'll hold them up by the lid to make sure that they um, are all sealed. And then I will date them and put them on the pantry shelf. But this is a complete meal on its own, but you could add biscuits. You could turn it into chicken pot pie. You could put some potatoes in it. You could even put potatoes in during the canning process. I just didn't have any to do that with. So yeah super simple and an easy prep.